Wait a second. Really? I only have five? Guess it's gonna be a shorter video today. <laughs> Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another full month of nothing new video. Today's video is going to be all about my Anastasia Beverly Hill eyeshadow palettes. We're doing a ranking video. I will be ranking the palettes that I have, talking about some of the palettes I don't have, but maybe I'm still interested in. I'm hoping that you guys might help talk me either into or out of adding those palettes to my collection. I have been a longtime fan of Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes. They're one of the first and really only higher end eyeshadow palette brands that I kind of have collected. That said, I don't own all of her palettes. I have kind of slowed down collecting them, but it should be a lot of fun before we get into the video. A special welcome to any of you that are new to my my channel. I hope that you will stick around, make sure that you are subscribed, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. So in no particular order, here are the five palettes that I have from Anastasia Beverly Hills. And for those of you that have been following me for a while, I want you to pause this video. Guess how I will be ranking these, number one being my favorite down below. My guess is some of you might get this right. Before we rank them, just so their feelings aren't hurt, I do want to just say that I do really like all of these palettes. But when it boiled down to it, really was not that difficult for me to put these in order from least favorite to most favorite. Let's start off with my bottom ranked palette and coming in at number five would have to be the Riviera palette. Now, if we were ranking on packaging alone, this would actually be my number one palette. I'm a huge fan of nauticals. Navy blue is one of my very, very favorite colors. I love stripes. I mean, everything about this packaging is just very, very me. But the color story inside, as you can see, is quite bold. Now, I actually don't think this color story is as bold as it appears to be at first glance. I really think if you take off, I mean, actually even the bright purple, I think if you take out that bold, bold pink, this is actually quite wearable to me, but it is not my favorite more colorful palette, especially as I have accumulated more palettes, even since getting this one, which I think I've had this for over a year now. I did buy this right when it was released. I have done a seven looks video with this. In fact, I think I've done a seven looks video with every one of these palettes. But when I first got this palette, this was one of my first more colorful palettes. So it actually added a lot to my collection that I didn't have. It was fun and playful and interesting and really quite unique for my collection. However, as I have collected more palettes, I feel like I can duplicate quite a few of the shades in here, at least the ones that I am drawn to, the ones that I most like to wear. That being the brown, the yellow, the lighter pinks and peaches, even the bronze, which this is actually not my very favorite bronze. I don't like this bronze very much, which is very unusual because normally I feel like ABH does some of the best shimmery browns or bronzes out there, but I don't really like the way this one looks on my lids for some reason. But a few things this palette does still really have going for it. These two blues right here are very, very unique to my collection. I love pairing these blues together. If I'm wanting a kind of steely blue look, these are the two shades I will gravitate towards. I absolutely love them. I also love that it includes a matte white. I wish more palettes would include a matte white. Even though it's not a shade I like to wear on its own, it gives a palette a lot of versatility. I feel like I say that all the time, but it is a fun palette. I certainly am not ready to declutter this one because I do on occasion like to reach for this one. But if I had to cut one palette, this might be the one that would have to go. And certainly if I have to rank them, this one's gonna come in at the bottom. Bottom. Coming in at number four, I have to go with the Carly Bible palette. When it comes to packaging, this would probably be my least favorite packaging. I just don't really like the detail on the front. It's not really my style, and that's not a huge deal breaker for me. I don't think it's terrible. It's just not really my style, which again, I think I've said that three times. The color story inside, I do think is really, really pretty. There are some standout shades in here that I think are very unique, especially this shade right here. Oh, I absolutely love it. It is the shade Moo beautiful lid shade. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Let me just swatch the shade Moo for you guys. Look at that. Mm, it's just a very warm light gold. That's a beautiful, beautiful shade. I love the transition shades in here. I love this red. This is a very unique red to my collection, one that I really, really love. I do love the bronze inside here. I love that you get a cool tone brown and a lighter warm tone brown. This dusty rose is beautiful. A couple things I don't love so much about this palette. The first one being the fact that these two shades right here on the lid look nearly identical. I would like to have really seen something a little bit different put in there. Let's go ahead and swatch the two blues as well so you can kind of see how similar they are. I mean, there's a very subtle difference between these two, but on the lids, again, I just think they look nearly identical. And also this shade in the corner, which is a shell pink, which I love a good shell pink, but this shell pink, although it swatches beautifully, has a lot of glittery fallout in it. It doesn't even look that glittery in the swatch, but every time I use this shade, I end up with small chunks of glitter fallout on my cheeks, which is very strange because there are more glittery shades in here that don't seem to have that problem for me. Again, I did do seven looks with this palette and I did like it. It is not a bad palette in my opinion, but it's not 
one of ABH's best. Now, when I first saw this palette announced and saw the color story, I was really excited about it because I love the unique way that this is set up. I feel like the top row, you get some nice warm tones. The bottom row, you get some nice cool tones. Nothing's overly bright or bold, but it's also not a very dull palette. But I think those few changes I would have liked to see along with the packaging is why I'm putting this one in the fourth spot. Coming in at number three, I'm gonna go with the Soft Glam Palette. I really, really love the Soft Glam Palette. I think it's a beautiful, warm tone palette. So many fantastic shades in here, so many great basics, so many great mattes in here, and I really do love ABH's matte formula. You get basically every matte you could ever need. You have a very, very light tone, some really good mid-tone or transition shades for any skin tone, and also some really beautiful deep shades. You get a warm brown, a cool brown, a black, and even a lighter neutral brown. Let me go ahead and swatch these three or actually four browns for you guys just absolutely perfect and not to mention these shimmers in here are stunning as well Let's go ahead and swatch these shimmers As much as I love this palette as much as I love the formula and textures I do think I have these shades repeated many places in my collection although i love the setup and i think as an entire palette it's a really good cohesive complete palette but just considering how much i love the next two palettes how to put soft glam at number three so let's talk about my number two palette for my number two palette i had to go with the sultry palette such a beautiful palette let's just take a moment for this packaging i know some people don't like the packaging they think it's a little bit too glitzy and i normally am not a very glitzy person but i just think the packaging is really pretty and fun to look at but more than anything the shades inside here are the reason this palette has to be at number two and where with the soft glam palette i had a lot of those shades repeated throughout my collection this palette is actually quite unique to my collection because i don't own a lot of neutral to cool tone eyeshadow palettes now it is still a very basic palette but I think another reason I like this one just a little bit more is you get a lot more lid options in here and some really really beautiful ones you have some really good classic bronzes a shell pink you have a light gold you even have this beautiful silver right here I mean look how glamorous those shades are where the soft glam shimmers are soft and romantic these ones are glitzy and glamorous and beautiful absolutely love them I also love the mattes in here again you get a standout black you get a gray you get this deep cool brown here just look at these shades and these definitely lean neutral to cool if i have a fancy party or something this is the palette i go for because i just feel like the looks that come out of this palette are very glamorous but in the best way i even love the pink in here i know some people have criticized this kind of random pop of pink in here but i actually like it now i know that this one i don't believe is available anymore if i can find it online i will link it down below but i also know there are some dupes for this palette out there see color cosmetics i know has one possible the alter eco has one as well i will be sure to link those down below for you guys in case you were interested in this color story and you can't get your hands on the original but as for me one of my top palettes i could not live without this one so moving into my number one palette obviously you guys probably know what it is got to be the Jackie Aina palette. Now, I have talked a lot about my preferences in palettes and the fact that I love a neutral palette that has some color options inside, and that's exactly what this palette is. I mean, first off, let's just take a moment for the packaging. This is the packaging that might give the Riviera a run for its money. I think this is so stunning, but more than anything, this setup of colors is so fun but so unique i can use it for every day but there's enough color to keep things interesting and adding just a splash of any one of these colors into some of the more neutrals in here gives you such an interesting varied look i'm wearing this palette on my eyes today i am wearing a mix of these three browns in my crease and outer corner and then i pop the shade this kind of greeny gold dwellas on my lid let me swatch that one for you guys and then i have this kind of white gold on my inner corner oh so pretty i've talked many times about how much i love this shade sponsored it is such a pretty green the shade lituation is such a beautiful taupe love the matte browns in here they are so stunning there they are and then this shade zam is such an interesting shimmer it has a lot of texture in it but it's such a pretty texture i love the color and texture of this shade as a lid shade it's kind of a peachy rose gold one of my favorite lid shades from abh and then of course these three colors right here i think work so beautifully into a more colorful look the red is gorgeous the purple is stunning i don't i will be honest i don't get a ton of use out of the shimmery purple but it is beautiful it's a shade i need to definitely use a lot more but love this palette every time i use this palette i have so much fun creating 
creating a look, which is always one of my favorite things about doing my eye makeup. I love a palette that makes me feel like I'm being creative and having fun, but I'm not out of my comfort zone, which is for me a perfect description of this palette. I think Jackie did such a great job in creating this beautiful, unique palette. And it definitely is unique. There are a lot of shades inside here that I know I cannot dupe throughout my collection. And that's actually a hard thing to do nowadays. So that is it for my top five ranked palettes. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the palettes I don't own that I've kind of been on the fence about possibly getting. First off, let's talk about the Modern Renaissance palette. Now this is, I know, one of the original ABH eyeshadow palettes that really people went nuts over. That palette came out long before I started my YouTube channel, back when I wasn't really even collecting high-end eyeshadow palettes, but I remember how much people raved about that thing. It is still available. It is a permanent one in their collection. And I do think the color story is beautiful and definitely one that I would enjoy. I do love berry tones. The shimmers in there look beautiful. I've swatched it several times, but I think the biggest thing that holds me back is number one, I don't need any more eyeshadow palettes really period ever but because it's older and because i have so many other palettes that probably have shades similar to those inside i don't know that i would get a lot of use out of it and i certainly don't think it's one that would be helpful for you guys for my youtube channel because it's been around for so long feel free to let me know if you think i'm completely wrong if that is one that i absolutely need but for the most part that's one i think i could probably skip over another one that i've considered is the norvina palette now that's another one that's been around for a while kind of feel the same way about that one that i do about the modern renaissance. It's a little bit older. I don't know that there would be a lot of interest from you guys in this palette, but it is quite a unique color story to my collection. I don't have a lot of soft purples, and that one seems to lean a little bit on kind of the soft purple and pink side. But as I've heard people talk about this palette over the years, it seems like people either absolutely love it or they really just don't like it or get a lot of use out of it. And I'm not quite sure which of those camps I would fall into. So again, not one that I'm dying to pick up, but I am open to your feedback down below. And I will say this, it is one of the palettes I've had the most requests to do a seven looks video with. So the last palette from Anastasia that I have a bit of interest in is her Pro Pigment Palette Volume 4. Now this is her latest larger palette that's come out. The first three I really didn't have much interest in at all. I felt like they were much too colorful for me. They're also larger. They're more expensive, but I have been eyeing this fourth one for quite a while. I've seen quite a few videos on it and the color story looks so beautiful. I mean, the soft shell pinks and taupes and purples, the browns in here, it is pricey. $60 is a little bit outside of my comfort zone for an eyeshadow palette. And as much as I love and always will love eyeshadow palettes, the more I've collected, the more I've realized this is kind of, I just can't keep up. I can't possibly collect all of these eyeshadow palettes and use them really at all. Like if I have too many palettes, I just know I will use them once and they will never get used again. And I have a much harder time now justifying buying a new palette just because I like the color story when I know there is a very high likelihood that that palette will sit and gather dust. But again, I think this one is beautiful. Let me know if you guys have tried it out, if you think it is worth the higher price tag. I mean, there are a lot more shades inside this one, but still, I don't know. I don't know. And with that, that is pretty much all I have to say about my ABH eyeshadow palettes. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to know how many of you guys guessed my ranking correctly. I bet a lot of you did get my number one palette. Of course, if you have any thoughts on some of ABH's other eyeshadow palettes, please leave that feedback down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel today. I hope that you guys are all doing well. Stay tuned. I have a very fun video coming up soon. I'm going to be doing my first empties video ever, and I have been accumulating some empties for quite a long time like quite a long time. So if you guys are curious to see what I use in my everyday life as far as skincare, hair care, body care, and maybe a little bit of makeup, keep an eye out for that video. Thank you guys again for joining me today. One more reminder to subscribe before you leave, and I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye. Subscribe before you leave. That is it. No. Quick note, what is on my face? Jackie Ina on my eyes, Wet n Wild pencil. I have my Tony Moly mascara on today. Elf Wow Brow with a little bit of my Ulta Brow pencil inside. On my cheeks, I have my Juicy Pain blush. I have my Milk Makeup bronzer. I have my Persona Zuma highlighter. On the lips, I have my Bite Beauty honeycomb, as well as my Essence Because Duh. I don't think it's Because Duh. I think it's meant to be said Because Duh. Who doesn't like to pretend to talk like a valley girl? Never gets old. Loved it when I was 15, love it still. Although I'm sure it's quite annoying. <laughs> Can I get away with ranking just five palettes? I don't know, I feel like it makes the video a little bit less credible, the fact that I only have five, but whatever. Before you leave, that is it.